Hi folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to discuss about Scrum activities and the tools used during the software development in a sprint cycle. In the last video, we discussed about the Scrum process overview and then about the sprint planning ceremony in detail. We learned about how sprint capacity is estimated. In a sample calculation, we estimated 216 hours as sprint capacity. We will be using the same for the discussion in this video. Further, we discuss about the sprint backlog formation based on the available capacity. We add stories that would make the sprint backlog items less than or equal to the capacity hours. Let us assume that the sprint backlog thus created is of 215 hours. Now I am going to discuss about the daily scrum meeting, the Kanban board and the sprint burndown chart. Now let us draw a graph based on the sprint backlog efforts required versus available time in the sprint in terms of number of days. At the beginning of the development, the required effort hours for the completion of sprint backlog are 215. If everything goes fine, then the remaining work hours will be zero on the last day of the sprint. So let us draw a line joining these two points. Theoretically, the remaining work hours for every day will fall on this line. This looks like a candle of remaining work burning down. Hence, it is called as burn down chart. And this straight line is called ideal sprint burn down chart. The actual burn down chart will be plotted every day around this guiding line. On lighter note, one must understand the difference between the burn down chart and burn down the chart. Now, we need to update the burn down chart on daily basis. But how to know how much to update? The visual task boards are helpful here. Many of the agile methodologies have come from mechanical industry like from Toyota Projects Japan. They used to have this kind of visual boards consisting of sprint backlog items. Every user story has an ID. This ID and some details are mentioned in the first column. The second column would contain all the tasks pasted on the chart in the form of post-its. The task name and number of hours required is mentioned on the post-it. The title of the second column is not started or to do. When the development begins, the team members would pick their allocated task and move it to in progress column and then start working on the same. Once the work is completed, they would move it to done column. This chart is called visual task board or visual storyboard or in Japanese, it is also called as Kanban board, where Kan means visual and Ban means board. Note that there is agile methodology called Kanban as well that is different. Now imagine such a visual board for your ongoing project. Any stakeholder on any day can see this board to visually understand the progress of project. Impressive and effective, isn't it? Now just one more thing to note. The number of columns in the visual board is not limited to three status. The team can add more columns based on their need. Well, with some exceptions, of course. On every working day, at the end of the day, the scrum master would check the visual storyboard, then update the burndown chart based on the remaining work. Plot the actual burndown point at the end of the day one for the given task board position. Task 1 worth 8 hours is completed, hence we need to plot the remaining work which is 207 hours. Now, if at the end of day 2, task 2 was completed but took 12 hours instead of 10 hours, plot the actual burn down point. We need to remember that the burn down chart is all about plotting the remaining work hours. So even if the completed task took more than the estimated hours, this is not going to affect the remaining work hours in any ways. So the remaining work hours will be 207 minus 10 equals to 197. If you remember, we have kept some contingency buffer. This extra time will be absorbed here. Some additional time may get added to the buffer if any task finishes early. Next, at the end of the day 3, no task was completed, but the development team found that the server setup required for the story number 101 
will take two extra hours. This was missed from the task breakdown during sprint planning meeting. So you need to plot the actual burn down point. Many times it happens that the development team is not able to foresee each and every task of the story. However, the day it is identified, it should be added to the task board. Now this task will add to the remaining work. Hence, instead of going down, the actual burn down chart will go up this time. Now the question is when and how the team is updated when such things are discovered? So the solution is every day the team members meet for around 15 minutes. The idea is to update each other about whatever is happening in the project. In this meeting, every team member speaks on three points. What did I do yesterday? What am I planning to do today? Impediments if any. The minutes of meeting are not noted. The obstacles if any are parked and not solved in this meeting. Scrum master may call for another meeting calling only required people who can solve the problem. It is recommendable to hold the daily stand-up meeting at a fixed time, making it a habitual practice. This meeting is known by multiple names like daily stand-up meeting, daily scrum meeting, progress meeting, daily huddle, roll call, etc. Now, is it important to stand up in the meeting? Standing up and talking gives a sense of urgency because the meeting should be finished in 15 minutes. Some teams do it like chai pe charcha, meaning conducting the meeting over tea coffee. At a daily stand-up meeting, in following scenario, tell me who are the team members reporting to. While team members are speaking, they are maintaining eye contact with scrum master and scrum master nods in response. All the team members either look at their cell phones or watching team members who are talking to the scrum master. Some team members simply write email to scrum master with copy to all the team members mentioning about their updates instead of attending it. All these things are indicative of non-collaborative environment and the scrum master being process owner is responsible for correcting it. The team members should not be reporting to the scrum master. They are supposed to report to the team. At DSM, the team gets to know what is happening in the project. They get to know about other informations like the visitors or impediments being solved or if there is any new employee joining the team, the idea is to keep everybody in sync about the progress. Scrum Master facilitates and ensures that the meeting finishes on time. The meeting should not be held far from the workstation. This meeting is not for micromanagement. It is not only for Scrum Master. It is not a technical discussion. It is not a planning meeting. When the teams don't follow this, they end up conducting long stand-up meetings, wasting the productive time, teams losing interest in attending the meeting. So now another relevant question is how to keep the meeting limited to 15 minutes. Blank meetings? Well, this may not be a feasible solution to limit the time. A scrum master shared that he asks each team member to drive the meeting once in a month so that they get exposure. Yet another suggestion is you can let the speaker hold a token if you want to avoid several simultaneous conversations. But this one has to be at least 5 kilos. This will remind the speaker of limiting his or her contribution to bare factual and necessary details. Next question. A team member has been working on the same task for last 4 days. The task size was 25 hours and now on the 5th day he declared that he has not been able to complete anything due to some issue. How to address such problems? So here are some important tips. None of the tasks should be bigger than one day effort. Split the task logically if it is bigger than that. Thus, the team member will either report it to be completed or report the obstacle in the next daily stand-up meeting. Fail fast, fail cheap. Now similar to the burn down chart, there is a concept of burn up chart as well. While burn down chart plots the remaining task hours, the burn up chart plots the completed task efforts. Thus, on the last day of the sprint, potentially shippable items are ready for demo. The demo is followed by sprint retrospective. In next chapter, I am going to discuss about these ceremonies. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comments.
You may subscribe the channel for future updates.